This is Gargan Roo. And it's got really, really weird music. <laughs> hmm. Long before the invention of airships, and we'll see why eventually. Yeah, nobody use it. Mr. Bishop. Who is Mr. Bishop again? Uh, presumably it's his patron, but I can't remember if we've seen him around town. Hmm. Find the sequence trigger. Alright, this is probably the smallest dungeon in the game. But here's a Moogle. We talk to the Moogle, give him a letter, and... Da -da 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 -da. And weird love stories between Moogles. I... I don't know. Okay, sure. Stupid Moogle. Anyway, this is actually another... Yeah, he just wants to find a sequence trigger. It's... It's a very small dungeon. Basically, let's pick up this treasure. That's a chain plate. That, oh, there's another treasure over there. And this is the sequence trigger. I'm gonna head to the other side, because I can't remember if there's anything over there, and I also have to show off the enemies in here. Eventually, once I run into them. This is actually another really good area. Okay, there isn't anything over here. This gate is closed, so that sequence trigger just basically opens that gate. Um, hurry up and run into a battle already. Jeez, I want to show off the enemies. <laughs> this is another really good area to do grinding if you feel like doing it. You can gain a significant amount of uh, experience and AP here fighting some... These guys. Big worm type guys. I think they're beasts, but I'm not 100% sure. If you attack them, I don't think they're weak to win. But I could be wrong. I think they are weak to win. And they do a moderate amount of damage. 70 damage. It's not horrible. And yes, they are considered beasts. So Steiner gets to do a lot of damage. And they are weak to wind. Or at least Dagger can do a decent amount of damage to them. So. There we go. Yeah, basically, not too hard. Holy crap, that's nice damage. That's very nice damage. Steiner with the Bloodsword is a bloody powerhouse, and he can solo a lot of things. You know, 3 AP per battle, 320 experience, ores and ethers. Specifically for those, so you can build up, you know, you shouldn't need a lot of ore. Um, but if you get enough ethers, you can sell them off, because you probably won't use them all. And where are my ores? Are they up here? Where are my ores? At the bottom. Oh, they're there. Yeah, see? Disc 2 and I got 85 of them. Uh, you, as, If you continue to steal from everybody and do the Chocobo Hot and Cold, you will get pretty close to maxing out before you can actually make use of them. Which is kind of unfortunate, though you will be able to make use of them. Oh, when's the next point to do that? I can't even remember. Anyway, we've opened that up. And now we can go over here. And we can activate that. Actually, did I have to go? Oh no, that, that opened up that gate, but it also opened up this gate over here too. And I think we can go over here. Yeah. There we go. This is where we call the Gargant. Gargan? Gargan? Wow, ah, whatever. Uh, shaped like a circle. When you pull the level, the Gargant circles. Yeah, it's hard to explain when they don't explain what the Gargant is. Anyway, if we're going to go on at this point, I'm going to have to check my equipment and I'll be right back. And I'm back. And yeah, so just go pull on the lever. That comes down and now what? Holy crap, it's a spider? What the heck? No, it's not a spider. What the hell is that? giant insect that pulls a trolley. This is a very interesting way to have transportation. Like, this is unique. I don't think I've seen... 
I've, you've seen similar things in other games, but you know, you ride on some beast or whatever. But in this case, it's actually being tamed and being used for tra mass transportation. And if you talk to him, where was the leader? Yeah, that's this one over here. We go to that one. So we pull the lever, and it says fed or feed or something. And basically, this happens. He backs up, and it eats some food, and we can get on there. So he'll reverse the connection and let the Gargant go wherever else. Of course. Yes, she is. But she's definitely growing. And here we get another role model to try and convince Steiner to grow up. <sighs> Shut up, Steiner. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Very good, sir. Fare you well, princess. And it's time to go. And he's going to run back and throw the switch. And bye-bye. Of course, from that perspective, it doesn't look like this thing is in a circle at all, but whatever. And at this point... Hmm, look at that. Okay. Hmm. Now yeah, this is definitely an intriguing vehicle. Unique character. And why'd we stop? Hesitating. Why would it be hesitating? And are you going to explain why? And the princess jumps off. And what do we have here? We have a giant snake. Could this be the reason? I wonder. And it's time for another boss fight. -da -da -da. This game has awesome boss music. It really does. This boss has something kind of unique in terms of strategy you'll have to do in it. Um, first of all, we obviously want to steal. And can I make use of any of my abilities? Dark side I haven't really gone over. It reduces your HP to cause shadow damage to the enemy. Basically, it works similar to the way Dark Side worked in Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, I've got a bone wrist. That's not bad. Uh, do I have any status effects I can hit you with? Silence. Right. I think this guy can use some decent spells, and so you do want to inflict silence. Actually, now is a good time to go over something else. There is what's known as the tent trick, and you can actually use a tent in battle. And what it... Oh, I should have put antibody on. You can use it on a single target, and it has a chance... Well, one, it'll heal you. And two... Bitten by silence, darkness, poison, whatever. And it healed it full, but since I hadn't done any damage to it, it didn't matter. Where's my poison spell? Do I not have it? That's the one. This thing was called something else. Anyway, so yeah, you can do that, and this will eliminate its ability to cast some really annoying spells on you, and also the darkness will reduce damage. We don't have BB, so there is no slow. We can remove that, though. And it looks like Marcus is going to have trouble stealing. So if I don't get something on the next time, I will have to stop that. I should have put... I don't know why I forgot to put that on. That was just stupid of me. Alright, if I don't steal this time, I will have to do it off screen and show you what I steal in a moment. Alright, I'll see you in a moment. Ah, finally! I stole a Mithril Fork. And as you can see, Dagger has tranced. And I haven't really gone over what her trance does, because it's not really relevant at this point in the game. Uh, we can start attacking now. And that's gonna hurt, so let's get an antidote going. Good thing for the blood sword, though. Uh, basically, it turns her summon command into the Eidolon command, and this won't become pertinent until later when she actually gets the MP to cast all these summon 
summons that she already has. Um, I'll go into those a little later because it's kind of a story point about uh, when she gets to use them. So we'll wait for the moment. And don't think he was hit by silence, or if he was, that it wore off, and I haven't been able to reestablish it on him. So oh well. Basically, Steiner's going to be doing the majority of the damage. Okay, so it is immune. It says guard, they're immune to it, so I was wrong. He's not affected by it. You can still cast level 2 spells and such, but he also inflicts slow on your party members, which you can't do anything about, and he's got pretty good defense, so Marcus isn't going to be all that useful here. Mm. But yeah, he only has two items to steal, the Bone Wrist and the Mithril Fort. Other than that, you can just use him to attack or whatever. He's not all that useful in this fight. Basically, use Dagger, and yeah, he'll escape at this point. If you do too much damage to him, he escapes. And that's the end of the fight. And now, dun -da -da -da, we have arrived. Mm-hmm. He's going to go take a nap, I guess. Yeah, I have no idea where this is in relation to the part of the castle that we've seen already. And we go in here, and now we get to... Why is there eerie music? What's going on here? Hmm... How do we get out? Hmm, what are we doing here? And Steiner doesn't seem to know what he's doing, but he's going to play that he does anyway. Oh, so she knows about this place. Keep enemies from invading. Also said... Stale air? We need to hurry. Alright, let's keep moving. Oh, this doesn't look good. Yep, and move, 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 move. Don't just stand in one spot. Blaming Marcus for trapping you in your own castle. How do you figure? And no one's going to try and run away. So, can you figure what? Yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's real great. Missed our chance to escape, huh? And they fell for it. And the idiots are back. Yay! Mmm, I have returned. Too bad. All under arrest. Under arrest, they are all in. Mm-hmm. Take orders from the princess. Okay, she asked for it, and now you're making it seem like you're forcing her doesn't really carry the same weight when she wants to go. Capture the princess they've been ordered to do. And Steiner still won't believe it. Marcus is like, crap, how did I get mixed up with these guys? And the princess is like, really? What the hell? How is it that I'm communicating with my mother through these idiots? And switch perspective. And the way I mess around with my equipment is I just removed any unique pieces of equipment um, that I didn't want to stuck on those characters while I switched perspectives to these guys. Took off, uh, you know, accessories and all that. Phoebe's alright. And Quinta doesn't get any lines of dialogue here be and wasn't in the FMV if you remember back a couple episodes ago, because he is not a mandatory character at this point, so I never bothered to give him dialogue or put him in the, the FMV in case you didn't have him, I guess. Must go to Clara. Of course Vivi's coming. Hmm. Yeah. Who just seems to be playing a relatively large role. Oh, look at that. They did give him dialogue. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I 
<laughs> of course not. We'll find her soon. Alright, let's move out. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Oh, Dagger. Where could you be? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I find some of Zidane's little thought bubbles kind of amusing. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but I do. Anyway, time to adjust my setup, and I'll be right back. And I'm back. Basically, I want to go over this really quickly. Hopefully, it's not too long this time. Um, this is my basic gear. Learn Devil Killer on here. Decided to give Zidane Power Belt, for mainly for MP attack, but also for counter. Uh, BB's working on the Reflect Ring, because he is one of the people who already has um, ability up. So that makes sense that he should work on that first. Still working on Lightning Staff. Uh, still working on Raise Wind, and I have nothing better. Uh, and of course, ability up takes top priority over anything else. Um, fairy earrings on Quina here to learn level up and equip that new mithril fork on him. And as for abilities, you want I decided to give him level up because why not? Ability up for sure. Uh, millionaire as always, and loudmouth because there's nothing else that he really needs. Uh, important, you want bird killer and bug killer for the next area. You don't need anything else. I threw counter on there because why not? Of course, ability up and level up on her as always. BB, ability up because he's got nothing better. I just put stats protection on, though most of those won't be used in the next area. Zidane still doesn't have bug killer, so I'm just bird killer, beast killer because I like to keep that on him. Counter, alert, and of course, bandit. And I fixed everyone's rows and all that, so we can start working on stuff. That's all I wanted to do for that. But if you remember last time, this is where we want to go, it's up there. But uh, before I do that, if you remember last time, I think it was. Last time we got one of those couponuts. So, where is my couponut? Ah, eh, we can look at the super soft, why not? And Baku's making no sense as per usual. Here's Petrification. Here's the Griffin Heart. Raises morale, supposedly. It doesn't do anything. And that's a quote from Beatrix. Boom's Mirror. And the Couponut, again, blah blah blah. Anyway, I'm just gonna go give the Couponut back, and I'm also going to check um, on the frogs, see if I can uh, catch some more frogs, and I'll see if there's any new chocographs to dig up in the forest there. And then I will meet you back here. Alright, bye bye. And I'm back. Uh, there wasn't any new chocographs to dig up, so that was good, and I managed to catch up to 20 frogs without taking too much damage along the way, so that's good. And now we can move on, finally, to a very large tornado. That is a big tornado. Alright, let's see. Let's make a save file first. Why not? It's been a while. There we go. And Clara it is. How are we supposed to get through such a, a whirlwind of dust and sand? Clara's trunk. Hmm. The tempest subsides. Really? This is it subsiding? Didn't look any better from uh, the world map. Find yummy yummies. Yay. Anyway, we're allowed in for some reason or another. And we get a nice little FMV. Oh yeah, they said trunk. That is a big tree! That is a very big tree. Holy crap. 